Hello, everybody, and welcome to Theology 101. Today, we are going to look at the book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings is the 12th book of the Old Testament and the 6th book of the former prophets. The former prophets consist of four historical books, Joshua, Judges, Samuel, and Kings. First and second Kings were not originally divided into two books, but were one. However, the Septuagint, which is a Greek translation of the Old Testament from the 3rd century BC, separated Kings into two books, which is why we have 1st and 2nd Kings today. The books of 1st and 2nd Kings cover about 370 years of history, starting from the end of King David's reign. The message of 1st and 2nd Kings is about the decline and fall of the Kingdom of Israel, ending in judgment. So 2nd Kings continues the story from 1st Kings and begins with Elijah confronting Ahaziah, the king of Israel. Elijah says that God would judge Ahaziah with death. So Ahaziah sends 50 soldiers to capture Elijah, but they are killed by fire sent from heaven. Ahaziah tries a second time and fails, and eventually Ahaziah dies. Now Elijah's ministry ends, and before he is taken away, he asks Elisha what he wanted. Elisha responded that he wanted a double portion of God's spirit on him, which happens since Elijah ends up performing double the number of miracles that Elijah did. Elijah gets taken up on a chariot of fire to heaven, and Elisha begins Against his ministry. Jehoram, another son of Ahab, became king over Israel and reigned for 12 years and did evil in God's eyes. Misha, the king of Moab, rebelled against Israel after Ahab died. So King Jehoram recruited King Jehoshaphat from Judah along with the king of Edom to fight Moab. Jehoshaphat wanted to ask a prophet of God for help, and one of the king's servants mentioned Elisha. Elisha told Jehoram that he wants nothing to do with him, but for the sake of Jehoshaphat, he would help. Elisha says that God will fill their dry streams with fresh water and will give them victory over the Moabites. When the Moabites heard about the three kings conspiring against them, they gathered their soldiers to attack. However, the sun reflected on the water to make it look red, and they assumed it was blood from a conflict between the three kings. Thinking that they had an advantage, the Moabites attacked but were overwhelmed by the Israelites and were defeated. Now the camera zooms in on Elisha's ministry. Here's a list of miracles we see him perform. He provides continuous oil for a widow so she can sell it to pay her debts. He raises a woman's son from the dead, cleans a pot of stew to allow people to eat during a famine. He heals a leper named Naaman by telling him to wash himself in the Jordan River. He makes an ax head float so that a prophet in training can recover it since he could not afford to lose it. Then Elisha helps King Joram with his fight against Syria, leading to the king of Syria to surround Elisha with horses and chariots. However, Elisha was not afraid, telling his servant that they have more men than the Syrians, which is when God opened the eyes of the servant and he saw the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. God blinds the Syrians and Elisha leads them to King Joram. Instead of treating them like prisoners though, he had King Joram feed them well and release them which resulted in the Syrians never attacking Israel again. During the reign of Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, also became king of Judah, indicating that they reigned together for four years. Then he ruled for another eight years. He followed the evil ways of the kings of Israel, and he married Athaliah, the daughter of King Ahab. Later, Jehoram's son, Ahaziah became king of Judah and he reigned for only one year. His mother was Athaliah and influenced him to introduce idol worship into Israel. The reason for a short reign is seen when Elisha anoints Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, as king of Israel. When Jehu was anointed, God charged him with destroying the entire house of Ahab, which he does when he meets with King Ahaziah and King Joram during their battle against the Syrians. Jehu kills Joram and shot Ahaziah, who later dies after running away for his life. Jehu then confronts Jezebel and has some of her eunuchs throw her down from her window, and horses trampled on her. Jehu continues his mission to destroy the house of Ahab, and he sends a letter to the rulers of the city where 70 descendants of Ahab live. He had them kill all 70 of them and put their heads in baskets and sent to him at Jezreel. Jehu then assembled all the prophets of Baal and killed them and wiped out Baal from Israel. However, Jehu also lived in sin by continuing the worship of golden calves in Bethel and Dan. Jehu eventually died after reigning for 28 years, which led to the reign of Queen Athaliah in Judah. When Joash was anointed king of Judah by Jehoiada the priest, Athaliah interrupted the ceremony yelling, Treason! Treason! Jehoiada executed her and made a covenant to reform Judah from their Baal worship. King Joash reigned for 40 years, and he did what was right in God's eyes because Jehoiada, 
the priest instructed him. Joash repairs the temple, but he was assassinated by some of his servants. While Joash reigned in Judah, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, began his reign in Israel for 17 years, but he did what was evil in God's eyes. After him, his son Jehoash reigned in Israel for 16 years, and he also did what was evil in God's eyes. Then we see Elisha gets sick and prophesies to Joash that Israel will strike down Syria three times, and then he ends up passing away. At this point, we start to see shorter summaries of the different kings who ruled Judah and Israel before the destruction. Joash's son, Amaziah, ruled Judah for 29 years, and he did what was right in God's eyes. While Jeroboam II became king of Israel and reigned 41 years, and he did what was evil in God's eyes. Azariah, or Uzziah, the son of Amaziah, became king of Judah, and he reigned for 52 years and did what was right in God's eyes. While Zechariah, the son of Jeroboam II, ruled Israel for six months until he was assassinated by Shalom, who ruled for only one month before he was assassinated by Menahem, who ruled for 10 years. Then Pekahiah, the son of Menahem, ruled Israel for two years, before he was assassinated by Pekah, his captain, and made himself king and reigned for 20 years. Hosea assassinated Pekah and made himself king and reigned for nine years. Later, the king of Assyria captures Hosea and attacked Israel for three years before capturing them completely and bringing all the Israelites away to Assyria. In Judah, Jotham, the son of Uzziah, reigned for 17 years, and he did what was right in God's eyes. Then Ahaz, the son of Jotham, reigned Judah for 16 years, but he did what was evil in God's eyes, even to the point of burning his son as an offering. Ahaz's son Hezekiah ruled Judah for 29 years, and he did what was right in God's eyes by removing the high places and breaking down the pillars for Asherah. After the fall of Israel at the hands of the Assyrians, the Assyrians, led by King Sennacherib, began to attack Judah. The prophet Isaiah tells Hezekiah to not be afraid of the Assyrians, for he will make Sennacherib return to Assyria and die in his own land. God sends the angel of the Lord to kill 185,000 Assyrians in their military camp, resulting in Sennacherib to stop attacking Judah and return to his home in Nineveh, where his sons eventually murder him. Later, Hezekiah's son Manasseh became king of Judah and ruled for 55 years and did evil by rebuilding the high places and altars for Baal and Asherah that Hezekiah destroyed. Manasseh burned his son as an offering and led Israel to do more evil than other nations had done whom God destroyed. Then Amon reigned Judah for two years and continued the ways of his father Manasseh. His servants conspired and assassinated him, but the citizens conspired and killed those servants and made Josiah their king. Josiah reigned Judah for 31 years and he followed the way of King David. He repaired the temple and recovered God's law and committed Judah to do everything that God commanded. He burned down anything that had to do with the worship of Baal and Asherah and restored the Passover. Unfortunately, he was killed by Pharaoh Necho, the king of Egypt, and Jehoahaz, the son of Josiah, was made king. Jehoahaz reigned for three months before Pharaoh Necho captured him and made Eliakim, another son of Josiah, king in his place. Eliakim, also known as Jehoiakim, acted as Pharaoh's puppet and he ruled Judah for 11 years. Jehoiakim's son, Jehoiachin became king and ruled for three months before Babylon, the new world power, captured Jerusalem. While Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, attacked Jerusalem, Jehoiachin surrendered and Nebuchadnezzar made Jehoiachin's uncle king in his place and changed his name to Zedekiah. Zedekiah ruled for 11 years and rebelled against Babylon. So Nebuchadnezzar responded by taking over Jerusalem. He captured Zedekiah's sons and killed them in front of Zedekiah and it took out the eyes of Zedekiah so that his final view is seeing his sons murder. Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, he killed the priests, and Judah was taken into exile to Babylon. Later, Amel Marduk, the king of Babylon, freed Jehoiachin, the king of Judah, from prison. He gave Jehoiachin a seat at his table, allowed him to eat with him regularly, ending the book with some hope since Jehoiachin is a descendant of King David, meaning that God's promise of a future Davidic king who established God's kingdom over the nations and fulfilled the promises given to Abraham is still possible even while Judah is in Babylon. Thank you to today's sponsor, On Reverence. They offer a free digital worship music app called Maskill. If you want to find out more, I'll leave some links below in the description box. If you missed the last video about the book of 1 Kings, I'll leave a link here for you to watch. Until next time, see you!